And hey guys, what's up? It's called Your Detective here investigating your favorite movies. And today I'm going to be doing a documentary review again on all the beauty and the bloodshed. So, um, yeah, I actually planned to watch the Demon Slayer movie today, uh, but I didn't because I realized I don't have a lot of time and I missed the bus to the cinema twice. So, um, I, I can't do it. I just can't. So, um... Yeah, instead I finished watching the documentary All the Beauty and the Bloodshed, the latest documentary by Laura Poitras, and uh, this documentary won the Golden Lion at the Venice Film Festival, which is the biggest award you can get. Of course, this is also the same award that Joker got, uh, which is pretty funny, but the Golden Lion is not to be messed with. I think um, some of the most... Um, interesting, underrated, overlooked, artsy films have also won the Golden Lion. So, uh, yeah, All the Beauty and the Bloodshed also got nominated for the Oscars for Best Documentary Feature, which is pretty cool, alongside Fire of Love. About a week ago, I reviewed Fire of Love. I thought it's a pretty good documentary, could have been better, so I didn't expect that I would watch another documentary so fast. But here I am. I honestly predict that this one will win Best Documentary. However, I do have to admit, when it comes to Best Documentary feature in the Oscars, the winner is always a little bit unpre unpredictable. You know, throw back to the time uh, my octopus teacher won over, like, everything else. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. But anyways, this is a documentary about two things, and these two things are connected. The first of all is about the opioid crisis in America and the family responsible for that crisis, the Sacklers family. They are a family that runs a pharmaceutical company called the Purdue Pharmacy Pharmaceuticals and they make these opioid pills and convince people to take these pills and a lot of people get addicted to these pills, they overdose and they die. And a lot of people die, 100,000 every year. Uh, 200,000? Um, I don't know, but America has gone through a really bad opioid crisis. And then another th part of this documentary is about the life of photographer Nan Golden. And it's interconnected because Nan Golden is the founder of this organization called PAIN, P-A-I-N, which uh, stands for something I forgot, but it is an organization which bands together and protest against the Sacklers family. And that is because Nan Golden herself has overdosed on OxyContin, which contains opioids, and she decided that this would be kind of her life mission in a way. So yeah, this is a pretty long documentary. It's two hours long, and it has multiple chapters. And let's talk about the part where the documentary deals with Nan Golden's life first. I think this part can be a bit slow paced and not as interesting as the stuff that happens uh, in the present day, the protesting stuff. So the way the documentary sh uh, sort of shows the narrative is that we're gonna get a small chunk of what's happening in present day with the opioid crisis and then a small chunk of Nan Golden's life story, like her childhood, and then more present day stuff, her adult life, and then more present day stuff, and her uh, life as a photographer, and then more present day stuff, and it sort of alternates in between one another. And I have to admit, the stuff that is about Nan Golden's life is not as interesting, unfortunately. It's just a little slow pace, because whenever we get to that part, we're always hit with a slideshow of photos, which are really, really good photographs, but it's usually either silence plus some narration or some music plus narration, and that's it. Visually and stylistically, it's just not as interesting. And I think Nan Golden's life story is also not that interesting. Sure, her life story is very turbulent, full of ups and downs, and it's pretty crazy. It's a pretty crazy story. It's life stories like this that make me question, oh my god, there are probably people around me who has lived such a tumultuous and scary life, you know, with 
a lot of abuse and a lot of bullying and ups and downs and going to the underground and all that stuff. And I am the one living the boring life, talking to a camera, talking to my phone, reviewing a movie. It's stories like this. But still, stylistically, I think it's a little uninteresting. But that is until the latter half of her life story, where we have her battle against AIDS. Um, I don't think she got AIDS, but she protested against senators and politicians who willfully ignored AIDS in the late 80s and early 90s. And also the part where she talked about how the people around her are dying. Then the last part of her life story when she finally found out the truth about her sister's death, which was very impactful and memorable. And um, even though it's a slideshow with very grim music underneath, it really left a strong impression. I also really like the musical choices of this film. They're very niche, they're very classy, yet kind of underground, kind of exotic in a sense. In the present day parts where we have Nan Golden fighting against the Sackler family, they're pretty interesting and pretty captivating and gripping and inspiring as well, given that she started off as a photographer and she slowly worked her way up all the way from protesting in the Met Museum and Tate Modern and, and the Louvre to actually bringing it to court and suing against the Sacklers themselves, really fighting her way to the top and um, forcing these museums to remove the Sacklers name from halls and in rooms and also uh, causing Purdue Pharmaceuticals to so file for bankruptcy. So it's pretty interesting and um, it's, it's, a, it's the kind of documentary that really puts you back and makes you think. A good chunk of this documentary also showcased uh, the New York nightlife, the booming hippie world of New York in the late 70s, uh, late 60s to like early 80s, I think. And it's a pretty interesting part. It's also very, very night and day from like everything else, every other type of lives ever. So it's pretty interesting and um, pretty quirky, I must say. Yeah. So yeah, I'm giving this documentary um, uh, a decent 8 out of 10. I think it's a really thoughtful documentary. It's pretty interesting. And I like the editing choices and the musical choices as well. And um, out of the two documentaries I've seen, uh, Fire and Love and this one, I wish this one would win over Fire of Love. But I haven't seen the other three, so I can't really tell. So have you watched this Documentary, comments below, let me know, subscribe if you want more, and thanks for watching. Also, really cool title for the documentary. Every single title for every chapter, and the title for the documentary itself, also comes from, like, um, like a quote someone has said. Of course, every time I film myself, my roommate has to be outside doing something. Um, and uh, the title actually refers to a psychiatric report. Okay. Okay, goodbye. Fuck.